Hey there, YouTube. Today, I'm going to share 50 of my favorite tips for MATLAB programmers. Start using the MATLAB debugger. A lot of programmers are not appreciating the power of being able to stop a MATLAB program, look at the variables, run some of their commands, and understand wholesomely what's going on. When you're writing a complex script, take chunks of that and put it into a function. You can store that function at the bottom of your M file, but better form will be to put that in an entirely separate function.m file. You should really just have a main script, and then that main script should call a bunch of other individual functions that relate to that main script. This keeps your main script really easy to read and your functions completely separate. Start storing lots of variables like parameters or one-off numbers into an object called a structure. Structs are very easy to use, the syntax is simple, and then when you pass these parameters to functions, you just need one object name instead of passing five or six different parameters. If you're new to MATLAB, familiarize yourself with the MATLAB IDE. There's so many functions in here. You can import data graphically, you can start GUIs, you can use the debugger, you can change your layouts, there's a lot that you can do. It's highly customizable. Make it your own if you're going to be spending a lot of time in the IDE. Go easy on your eyes and change the background color of MATLAB. You can do this in the preferences area of the IDE. Start using GitHub and Git to organize your MATLAB scripts. This is what all real developers end up doing. It's a great way for organization, but also for starting to share your code. It makes you more professional. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's definitely worth the effort. Begin using naming conventions very seriously. Pick one and stick to it. There's nothing worse than having to guess variable names that use different conventions. Just be consistent with one naming convention. Use MATLAB's help and doc commands in the command window so that you can easily access MATLAB's documentation. And when you do this, don't just read a small snippet and then run and go back to your program. If you're trying to learn MATLAB, read the documentation thoroughly and you will better understand the capabilities of functions and why they do what they're designed to do. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. You should absolutely be making hundreds of mistakes while you program in MATLAB. There are a few things that I can do without running into an error in MATLAB. Be comfortable reading those error messages, look in the line that is referenced, and then walk through and try to understand what might be going on. Start learning a different programming language. There is quite the world of languages out there, and MATLAB is not necessarily the best for what you're trying to do. Plus, when you learn more languages, you become a better programmer because you understand things from a different perspective. There are two main types of programming languages, those that are compiled and those that are interpreted. MATLAB is an interpreted language. If you don't know what those words mean, look them up. Also learn the difference between high-level and low-level languages. MATLAB is a very high-level language. It's been built with C++, which makes it a higher level than C++ is. You can write tick, T-I-C, at the beginning of your program, and then at the end write TOC, T-O-C, at the end, and it will automatically let you know the elapsed time. Talk to your peers about your program. I like to think that programming is a group sport. It's very difficult, and you can always use some help. When you receive an error in MATLAB, take it as a challenge. Look it up online, read the error message, and figure out what's going wrong. Chances are there is a huge learning opportunity right now, so don't squander that by getting frustrated. Take advantage of it and learn the difference between what you're doing now and how that error can be fixed. Try avoiding long months or stretches in your life where you don't program. Not doing something is the greatest way to become really bad at it, so if you just stick with it, even if you open up a program that you've written before, try to stay coding literate, and I promise you that you'll be better off in the long run. 
know when to use MATLAB and when to use other languages. Of course, you can use a hammer to solve a lot of problems, but hammers aren't good for every problem. When you can, try to vectorize your operations instead of using for loops. This is going to save your program a lot of runtime. If you ever get stuck in an infinite while loop, or if your program seems to be running forever for some reason, you can use control C to kill the program and stop it in its tracks. You may need to aggressively pound control C, but eventually the command will get through. You can make a while loop act exactly like a for loop if you simply keep a counter going that you increment every loop of the while loop, and then add an if statement where if that counter goes above a certain value, then you can break out of that loop. The break command will automatically get out of whatever loop you are in. And thus, for loops and while loops are basically the same thing. MATLAB comes with thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of functions that are built for you. I've made a fool of myself by trying to develop my own function to do something, when if I just spent two or three minutes searching online for that same functionality, I would have found a pre-built function that works a heck of a lot better than what I developed. Anonymous functions aren't used as much as they should be. It's a really quick way to define a function in line, and it's a great little input-output. This is a typical y of x situation, and you just need to plug in an x value to get a quick y value. A character in MATLAB is defined when you do single apostrophes on either side of the word, and a string is defined when you do two apostrophes or quotations on either side of that word. But note that most functions are interchangeable working with both strings and characters seamlessly. Limit your program outputs to only the question you're trying to answer. MATLAB has a lot of commands that describe the dimensions of a matrix. Know the difference between size, length, height, and width of a matrix. If you're working on a project that needs to scale to 100,000 images you need to process or something of that nature, don't start with everything. Start with maybe five to 10 elements of what you're working on and try to pull in some of the edge cases into that set. So that way you can test your algorithm on a much smaller set before going super big on this massive set. If you have certain functions in your script that tend to be more time intensive than other ones, such as loading in a big file or CSV, do that first in a separate section of your script. There's a lot you can do with plotting in MATLAB, but never forget the handy subplot functionality. This is a way that you can put multiple plots on the same figure. You could do six different plots, two side and one tall, three long ways and one, whatever you wanna do. The subplot functionality makes this super easy to organize cool plots. If you're really struggling with a script and you genuinely need help, of course, you can always ask me and send me an email but there's also great forums. The MATLAB community forum exists out there and there's tons of questions already posted online. You can post yours in addition to that. And there's also r slash MATLAB on Reddit. One of the most underutilized aspects of MATLAB are their plethora of toolboxes that are available. They've developed some absurd things that you can do like Simulink is nuts, you can do these aerospace calculations, it's got whole machine learning algorithms, but I think 95% of MATLAB programmers only use 5% of the overall capability. So spend some time on MathWorks website and learn about what's available and what you can use. Always clear the variables every time you run your script, and you can do that using the clear vars keyword at the start of a script. On that same note, if you need to keep a couple variables alive to use later, you can use the clearVars-except and then the variable name that you want to keep alive. Do not use global variables. This is so frustrating to see. 
don't use these because when you start working with other employees at a company or developing more complex scripts, no one's going to know what global variables are being used. This also makes it hard to know what variables a function needs in order to run successfully. One cool thing about MATLAB is they keep all the variables you used in your script alive after you ran the script. This allows you to do some really good debugging. MATLAB a long time ago made the bold decision to index starting with the value of one. So the first element in an array has the position one. Other languages start with zero as the first position. So when you move between MATLAB and other languages, just be aware you're going to make that mistake all the time. Keep in mind that MATLAB does natural logarithm with log command, L-O-G. That's different than the log base 10 command, which is log 10. Careful and that you don't get those things confused. As you become more familiar with MATLAB, take some time to really understand data types and data structures. Data types are things like doubles, integers, characters, strings, and then data structures are the ways that you can hold data types together in an array or a matrix or a structure. You should add enough comments in your scripts so that someone who has never seen your code can understand what you're doing. I say this because in three months you're going to come back to that script you just wrote and it's not going to make any sense. The best learning happens by doing. If you're watching a tutorial, pause it midway, try to implement what's going on, try to write more code than what you're given already, and then when you're stuck, go back to the tutorial and understand what happened. When you challenge yourself to think creatively about how to solve the problem, you trigger a different part of your brain than if you're just told what to do. Know the difference between element-wise operations versus matrix operations. That little dot that you see people put before multiplication or exponentiation or things like that really does make a difference in MATLAB. Speaking of linear algebra, you should probably learn a little bit about that. So watch an online YouTube video on linear algebra. MATLAB has very impressive and easy to use 3D plotting functions. Plot3 is great, even Scatter3. These are some awesome tools that come right out of the box with MATLAB that you can use to make beautiful 3D images and visualizations. If you're working on a big project, start by writing out by hand the different sections of your code and what you need them each to do. This is called that pseudocode notion where you take a, take a step back and say, okay, how does this need to flow? What output do I need from this portion? And how will that be used as the input to the next function? Write all that out, function to function, and then go through and start actually coding each of those functions. That'll make big problems a heck of a lot easier. Do not pay for a MATLAB license. There's four ways you can get a license for free. If you're a student, you can get your campus license from your university. If you are a professional, you likely have some sort of group license at that facility. If they don't have one, encourage them to buy one for you. You can do a 30-day free trial where you download MATLAB and use it for 30 days unlimited. Or MATLAB just rolled out a 20 hour per month MATLAB online usage where you don't need a license, but you are limited with the time that you're working with the software. If you want to access the last item in a matrix or array, you can use the end keyword. And that way you don't have to waste time trying to use the length of something and then plug that in to get the end value. If you're getting really frustrated by a piece of code that you're writing, that's okay. Take a breath and step away from the code. Coding takes a lot of time, so don't get overwhelmed. If you're learning something new, whether it be MATLAB or even the flute, find different mediums that you can interact with to learn. Of course, I've got YouTube videos you guys can work with. 
MATLAB provides on-ramp tutorials you can use as well. There's trainings online. Get a book, read articles, try to find a visual, audio, and then text-based source so that you can interact with MATLAB in different ways from different perspectives. If you believe that you really need some support with a MATLAB project, I do offer some of my patrons on Patreon email support. This is if you're writing a script and you come up with an error or you need to figure out how to approach a problem, you can shoot me an email and I'll be happy to help you out. Last but not least, and I know it's cheesy or corny or whatever, try and have fun with MATLAB or any programming language or anything you do in life. If you come in with a horrible perspective that you have to do this and it's not worth it and blah, 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 it's going to be the most painful experience of your life and you're not gonna learn anything. If you come in with a fresh perspective that you're learning a new skill which is valuable in today's economy, that this will lead to you know, a job promotion or even new career paths, you're going to have a much better drive to care and learn about what you're doing. I want you guys to succeed and I do wish you sincerely all the best. Please subscribe to the channel. I've got videos coming out weekly to help you guys along your journey. You can do this and I'm here to help.